Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here, and in today's CCNA 2012 video boot camp, also especially for you future CSENs out there, we're going to be hopping on the live equipment here literally in about 10 seconds, and we're going to be working with RIP today. I've got some really good commands here to show you, and a live, uh, live router scenario, a live lab scenario that I want you to take a look at as well. So let's go ahead and bring up that live equipment, and the first thing I want to show you is in the output of the command show IP protocol. By default, RIP is going to send an update, a full routing update, every 30 seconds. It's not just advertising the routes that have changed since the last update. It's sending the full tables every single time. That is a lot of unnecessary overhead. It's unnecessary on the local router, and we really don't want our remote routers having to unpack that either. they got enough to do. So this is why you don't see RIP on a lot of wide area networks. Something else I wanted to show you here, man, I had the hardest time keeping this straight when I was studying for the NA, so I just want to drill this home for you. You know, we have the two versions of RIP. You know you got to know the differences between the two, and there are several of them. But the odd thing is, by default, a RIP-enabled interface is not going to work only in version 1 or only in version 2. It's going to send version 1 updates only and receive versions 1 and 2. So I would have that default definitely down before I took either one of my exams. Now let's take a look at the routing table itself. And right now we've got one simple route that we're learning about from two remote routers. So they're both being put in the table. You know, the hop count for RIP, you know, the metric is hop count. That's the same. So they're both going to be in the table. And this is 172.23.00 slash 16. Now note how that's going to change when we're, run, when we're running RIP version 2, because RIP version 1 does not support subnet information, subnet mask info. And let's go ahead, actually we'll start changing it right here. And if we want the router to accept and send only version 2 updates overall, we simply run version 2 right here. I'm going to put no auto there. I think I already had it there, but cover that in another video. All right, let's hop back up to router one then, and we're going to take a look at show IP route rip again. Now, this is interesting. We're seeing the subnet information now, the subnet mask, 172.23.23.0 slash 24, and we're now seeing the phrase variably subnet where we didn't see it before. And we're seeing that from router 2 and router 3 in our network. But this is interesting. Note that we still have this other route, 172.23.00/16, and it's been 35 seconds since an update on this. This is another reason that you don't see RIP in a lot of production networks, is that it's very slow to converge on its own. So we've made a major change here, but we still have this route kind of floating around out there that we don't want. So let me show you a great lab command, and it comes in handy in production networks on occasion as well. It's clear IP route asterisk. This is going to get rid of all dynamically learned routes in the table, we hope. <laughs> so let's go ahead with RIP and run that particular command. And what do we have next? Okay. So now, note that we still have the subnet information, but notice now that we're also getting the version 1 update. See that classful mask, it's still being advertised out there. We're still getting it because, again, RIP is very slow to converge. And notice that the hop count is going up. So that does tend to point out a bit of a routing loop out there somewhere. Some updates are getting advertised, and then they're coming back. So this is another reason, this is what I wanted to show you actually uh, with RIP, is that getting it to converge totally, even in a lab environment, can be a real pain. So you can see why, again, you don't see it in a ton of production networks today. So let's go ahead and run clear IP route asterisk again, and I bet they're all still there. Yep, and notice this one's already zipped up to 15 which means we know that's, almost, that's at infinity almost because 16 is infinity to rip. So that one might have just about aged out by this time. Let's see if it's gone. Let's clear the routing table one more time. I'm going to go over my time limit here and see 
what we see. Yeah, and now it's gone. So we could have seen possibly down there. I'm really glad you got to see that because I know you get to see a lot of Slash 15, you know, in the books, but it's kind of hard to replicate it on live equipment. But that's one reason I wanted to do this lab again is just to illustrate to you that getting RIP to converge in a production network can be even harder because this is a simple three router setup and look what we had to do we had to clear our table a couple of times to get that to work so some great practical stuff there for you to see as well and again finally after continuing to clear the table we finally got rid of those old routes but that is one issue with RIP is that slow convergence and between that and the continuous updates that's a real reason you don't see it in a lot of production networks but we still got to know it for the exam thanks for watching today's CCNA video boot camp come on out and join me on Twitter on the blog and Facebook as well and look for our free ebooks hitting amazon.com in May 2012 thanks again for making TBA part of your Cisco certification success story. I'm Chris Bryan, and I'll see you next time.